beautiful. It's lovely to see you. It's kind of funny being out here in all of these clothes and having a hat on, but you know, the minute I walk into the sun, the reason for it becomes obvious. So um, let me show you what was I going oh, I was down on the shady part of the lawn for a reason. I wanted to show you something. So let me show you what's growing here. Is Johnson's blue geranium. It's a very sweet thing. And uh, there it is. Isn't it just fabulous? Morning, Linda. Look at these beautiful flowers. They're so simple. And they just sort of come up. Um, come on, give me some focus. Camera's a bit... Ah, there we go. Finally, it's sharp. Um, so look at the leaves. I love the detail of these leaves. They're just glorious. Um, and we've got some hostas here, which are kind of moth-eaten, but that's what happens. Um, and what else have we got? There was something else I wanted to show you. Let me not be too quick panning around the garden, because, you know, you can see the shadow of the neighbor's fence and the sunlight and the corfi blossoms over there and uh, the slightly battered white anemones. And in the background there are, in the shade the and there's me, you can see the pink anemones. But what I wanted to show you, because it's the time of year for it, is this. I'm going to stand in the garden and show you the camellia. Good morning, Julian. Captain and number one are both on the bridge. Welcome aboard the Enterprise. So isn't that beautiful? You have to imagine um, the lovely scent of this. It, it is a scented camellia. They aren't all scented, but this one's fabulous. And you can see there's going to be a lot of flowers. Um, they're very generous trees. They just flower all over the place once they get going. So there's some more. So they're fabulous. Oh, excellent! <laughs> Mask making is done. Congratulations. So there's the wild garden and... Um, couple of lemons I'm probably going to have to pick them soon because they're really really ripe but it's taken months for them yeah see there's just a little bit of green on one side now if they're green you might as well leave them on the tree they keep better there and they keep growing and you can see next season's crop already hard and green and definitely a long way from being edible but there they are the tree is really happy and producing like mad right let me get started so today, 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 I want to keep talking about the gap. We talked about the gap yesterday, I think. Yesterday was a lifetime ago. I don't remember that well. Um, truly, it's like yesterday is a long time ago. Um, but what I want to talk about today is the situation where you have done everything you know how to do to move through your thing, whatever it is, your block, and we talked about emotional blocks that just wouldn't move yesterday, and why they won't move, because there's trauma, or something very powerful that's just sitting in our bodies and anchoring it there, and when you can't see it, it's unconscious, it's invisible, right? So how do you spot this? How do you... Like, oh, banging my head against a brick wall inside myself. I just can't see it. Morning, everyone. I can see you're on. I can't see who you are, but it's lovely to have you with us. Um, and, and it's that situation of thinking, oh, God. And, and the first thing is, if you're thinking, well, where are the things where, you know, I've surrendered and I've let go and I've, and, and you know, where are the things that I'm still hanging on to for dear life? Because, you know, I've, and this is my story, right? Here I am, I've had this challenge with money for a very long time. And I do this and I do that. And, and it's not, I don't buy the latest money program. I don't buy the latest abundance thing because I know that. I figured out a long time ago, that didn't work for me. Um, but, you know, I would keep working with myself, keep paying attention, keep noticing the gap and keep gathering clues about who it is that I wanted to be right and the more clues that I gathered by looking at who I was being that I hadn't noticed for my entire life how lackful I was being or how fearful I was being about money just to tell you my story to make it real right because I can tell my story I'm not making up anyone else's or third party this is me so and I've been doing this since August last year remember 
If you don't know, this that's when I got really, really determined that I'm going to crack this bloody abundance nut. So don't think that I decided that and the next week it was all done. <laughs> the skeletons in the neurological closet, the neurological, biological, endocrinological, epigenetic, energetic closet. Yes, it's the whole thing. So... I just, you know, I, I couldn't exactly figure it out, and I didn't know. But I started doing this thing that I rave a, a lot about, thinking, well, who do I want to be? And as I started to get to know who I wanted to be, it got a little bit easier to see how I wasn't being that. And that's the thing we talked about yesterday, it's shining a light in a dark place. You're going to have to set yourself... I want to say some new standards, but create yourself a new template. Decide who you want to be. Start to get clear about it and realize that often you have no idea because you don't know, right? You don't know what you don't know. You don't know how to be what you want to be because you've never been that before. But you have to start playing with it. And so I've been in that process really determinedly. And and by determined, I don't mean I'm working really hard at this. Because if it doesn't give you what you want. But I mean this deep decision that you make this has to change it's just got to change and I don't care what's going on in my life hi Michelle great to see you I don't care what's happening in my body or in my mind or how scared I am or how sick I am or whatever and I haven't been that sick just in case you wonder and I don't care how long it takes this has to change and I've talked often about that, that level of decision as well Everybody can remember a point, and for me it wasn't one specific moment, or if it was, I've forgotten it, which means it wasn't that important. But there was this firming resolve, this has to change. I'm, I'm done banging my head against this brick wall, right? So since August last year, I've been slowly and steadily and kind of dedicatedly getting to know something that I didn't know <laughs> I know what I know what I know and I wanted to know something else you're quite right Linda I had to get outside my own box I had to start creating a new self and that was weird I mean I knew the process I knew that if I kept on thinking well I want to feel like this and I want to think these thoughts and I want my life to be like this that eventually that would start to become more normal and usual and, and easy and you know everything for me hi Heather <laughs> Lovely to see you, sunflower star lady. Um, and so that was what I had been practicing doing. And, you know, the first thing was that deep in the unified field with my conscious mind chatter shut down, because that's what happens when I get deep, is all of that <laughs> goes away, was that I started to actually connect with that state of being. And that is, is really, really big because you start to get to know that person. And even if you can only reach that person when you go into the very deep, still places of yourself, that's a bonus, that's progress on not having any idea who that self is. And so, you know, I keep doing that and, and every time I do that, it's good and I, I overcome some aspect of my lackful self and I, I let go of or become more aware of things that I don't want to be or think or do or feel or anymore. And so that carries on and that carries on and that carries on and it takes time if you're dealing with something that's really ingrained and surprisingly, unexpectedly, because you can't think of any reason why seems to be powerful enough that it's got kind of like trauma wrapped around it or it's certainly, you know, it's a real chain. It's a real, I can't just decide to feel differently about this. Why is this so hard? I don't get it. But you carry on and I carried on getting more familiar with that version of myself that I really didn't know. And the more I got familiar with that version of myself that I really didn't know before, I started to get little clues about who... I was being I started to notice when I wasn't being that and again it was no great oh I get it now it was just oh oh I noticed that now oh shit I've been doing that for a long time Ooh. And that's what we have to do if you really want to create change you got to start you got to get outside your own box enough you got to have a point to make a comparison with Laura morning sweetie and, and, you know, and you've got to get to know that point so that you can say, I'm being it now. Now I'm not being it. 
so I just carried on doing this. Eric, it's great to see you. You always come together, it's lovely. <laughs> You're in the bubble together, aren't you? So I kept on doing that and I kept on doing that. And you've all heard me talking about realising, because I was telling you about this recently, realising how fearful I found it to sit down at my computer, um, log into my bank, log into my online banking. New Zealand online banking is brilliant. You can do everything from, from home. You don't have to go to the branch very occasionally. Um, I love it. It's great. And yet, you know, I'd, I'd even think about it. It got to the stage I would think about it, and, and I still have to be very conscious about this, right? But it got to the stage where I'd think about it or anything to do with needing to ask money, receive money, pay money, anything to do with walking down, sitting on that seat and doing that thing, and I would feel fear. And it's like, oh, Maddie. And then eventually I realised that I always felt like that. I just hadn't noticed it, right? So with all of my letting go and all of my releasing and, you know, and I'm not talking about doing deep emotional clearings. I don't do that. I'm interested in pruning neural networks and reconditioning my body to a new mind. That's what I'm interested in doing. But overcoming my beliefs and realizing what I believe and think, I need to think this differently. I need to feel this differently. I need to do this differently. And still finding that I felt like I was pissing into a strong wind and, you know, getting wet and smelly. Just didn't shift. And there I was again noticing this fear and it's getting stronger it's getting bigger it's getting louder and you know what's happening when that's happening it's not actually getting worse you're shining a light in a dark place and you're of yourself and that's great and I knew that that was what was going on so as much as it was uncomfortable and it was I knew that this was actually good so earlier this month I thought I'm going to have to ask for another loan against my inheritance from the family trust. Usual churning stomach. Oh, God. I thought, oh, okay. I need, to, I need to try and get into a better state about this. You know, and you carry on poking at it and thinking, well, I'm still not there. Another day or two, still working with it. Still not there. Another day or two, still working with it. Still not there. Still feeling all this fear. What the heck? The money's there, for God's sake. Why is this such a problem? Um, and it's my money. I'm not hurting anybody. And I'm not being a spendthrift. And I'm not doing it so I can lie on my ass and waste my time. I'm doing it so that I can do what I came here to do. Why do I feel so, you know, huh, about this? So I started to get some real clarity about this. And this is like this. So two days ago, it's like a real breakthrough for me. Very small thing, but really big thing. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, I was, Linda, you're right. Um... But I was starting to think, hang on a minute, okay, so this is how I feel. And I started to realize I was feeling guilty and I started to feel like I was, you know, and, and it was like, oh, have we been affected by the changes with COVID-19 and the economic changes? And, and so anyway, the first thing I did was I separate, I, so I had to write an email to the trustee. So I separated writing the email from going into my e inbox because I thought, my God, even logging into the, I, I, even the idea of logging into my email and writing that message in there is like fearful. You know, this is, this is really neurologically networked for fear. So while I had, I just had five minutes, I had a little gap in time and I thought, I'll just open up Notepad. See, because I don't have to send it to anyone, right? I'm just constructing the message I want to write. And I want the message to say the words and embody the energy of who I want to be around this, which is not, oh, I hate asking for more money. I had to really step this out because it was so ingrained and such a powerful super highway, highway in my head, in my body, about how I normally am about this. I don't want to be how I normally have been about this. So I wrote the little message and, and, and it was, the, 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 the communication was, hey, you know, I'm aware that there might have been changes in our, in the trust because of the team, let me know if that's the thing. Um, this is what I need, this is when I need it, let me know if that's okay. And the point about that is I didn't want to just march up and say, oh, well, I want some more money. I wanted to acknowledge the situation also didn't want to have any sense of I'm afraid you can't help me I'm afraid I feel bad I feel guilty I feel you know whatever so I wrote that and that was that was and I did it in about five minutes 
because I took myself out of the context that would normally just further clutter my brain. I really had, I just did a little place on my computer screen in about five minutes when I was just between tasks. And that was like earlier, that was like, I don't know, 10 in the morning or something. And I ignored it. I just left it on my computer. And then a little bit, and then that evening, that's right, I did it in the morning, the afternoon sometime. That evening, when I finally got to my personal email, which is when I do that, right? Email is the last thing that gets done um, for various reasons. And I thought, right, I want to send this email. And I sat there feeling what I was feeling about it and thinking, I don't want to click the button feeling like this. I just didn't. And my husband was sitting next to me, you know, we're both in the office working on our separate machines, but we sit next to each other. And I said, sweetie, I, I, I need some help. You know, I, I really want to work out how I want to feel about this. So he takes off his headset because he's usually watching something and doing something else. He's one of these people that actually can multitask. He's more productive that way. Gives me his full attention, which is always a really special thing. Not that it's hard to get, but just because it's when you get Lawrence's full attention, it's something powerful. Jocelyn, good morning. He's an amazing being. And so I explain and I read them. I don't know how I want to feel. And, uh, it's, and I started to unpack what I was feeling. It's like, oh, you know, it's like I realized quite recently, I realized I feel like a failure because I still haven't got this thing sorted out. I still have to keep asking for the support. Like, what's wrong with me that it's taken this fucking long? Um, and, you know, and, and the thought that the trustee would think lowly of me. It's like, and I know, and I knew as I said it, and I've always known that that's bullshit, but it was a feeling I was having, so I acknowledged it. What else? I think those were the two big things. Um, and and oh, and and the other, the yeah, the third one, the other one was, you know, and this thing of I don't want to receive anything from anybody. I want to. I feel like I need to be able to do it all myself, because then it's mine, um, and nobody has a claim over me. Nobody. I don't owe anybody anything. I'm not taking anything from anyone. I was right. So yeah, really, I need to be an island, and that's how it needs to stay. And I talked about that a little bit yesterday, but that's where that came from. This is like this is how I feel. So all of this stuff about no, I will not receive. It's not safe. It leaves me beholden. It means I'm a failure. You know, tra la 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 la. I didn't even talk about it as much as I talked about it now, but it's like it's harder to recall it because it's already less who I've been. But I want you to un to understand that there were degrees of, and layers and levels of stuff that I was unpacking in that moment. And then my husband said to me, does a fish need to feel worthy of the sea? Now bear in mind my husband is really truly a philosopher, but he doesn't just pontificate. Does a bird need to feel worthy of the air? And I sort of looked at him and said, no, what are you talking about? What's it got to do with all this because I couldn't get it I really it's like I could feel there was something in what he was saying but I just was like I don't know what you're talking about and and then he said what did he say he said well you know I mean this is the, this is the universe's support for you I can't remember all of it but that was the key bit the, the, this, the money coming to you this way is the universe's support for you and the thing that clicked in, and it wasn't in my head, you know, I'm doing this, but the thing that clicked in me was, oh, I'm feeling unworthy of that support. Fundamentally, underneath all of it, which I've learned from Joe Dispenza, is very common. When there's something we just can't receive, we feel unworthy of it. And I had not recognized it. I really hadn't. Oh, I don't feel worthy because a fish doesn't even question the water it's just there it breathes the bird does not question the air it just flies yeah. and it was oh I'm to let this in because I know that I've been keeping it out and that is the only reason really that we would keep something out fundamentally is like I don't feel worthy of that so, I'm like, oh, okay, the, the little aha moment, it was very quiet. It wasn't this great explosion. It was just, oh, I recognize this. And it kind of brought tears to my eyes. It's like, oh, that's really how I feel. Yeah, true. Ow, okay. And so then I thought, okay, Christina, good morning, lovely. 
now what am I gonna do? Because I've still got to send this email. So I sat in front of my computer, looking at the message, it was there, it was addressed to the trustee, I had the subject in it, I tried, I had to think, you know, what words do I want to put? And the subject, so that again, it's just framing this with the energy that I feel good about. And I sat there and I put my attention in my heart, I took my own advice and I started breathing in and out of my heart because I needed to create coherence. And then I started thinking, okay, I'm going to breathe worthiness in and out of my heart, feeling worthy, feeling worthy to receive, feeling safe to receive, but fundamentally feeling worthy to receive. And I had to sit there for a while and I had to wriggle my mouth so the screen wouldn't go to sleep because I, I wanted to keep my eyes on those words. And, you know, and I would breathe in, I would breathe out. And I felt, it took a little time, but I felt the emotion, the state of being coming and building. And, and I just kept on doing it. I kept on breathing in and out, worthiness in and out of my heart. And it did get to a point where I could feel like there was golden energy around those words and around the, you know, the subject, the whole email. I, I had a heart connection with it and it was my communication with love and respect for me and for the trustee and the family trust and everything. It was just exactly the way I wanted to feel about it. And, and so I took a few more breaths until I could really feel that and really hold that and then I clicked the button. You know, I was like, I was taking a piece of my mind and I was on the button and I thought, I really want to feel this on the in and the out. I really want to feel the solid. And I waited until I did. And then I clicked the button and let it go. And actually, you know, the state did not dissipate. <laughs> I had to go and let it go and carry on with all the things I was doing. But that was a huge breakthrough for me. It was very quiet. It was very uneventful. It wasn't dramatic. I have never occupied that space around money before in my entire life it's massive it's enormous um, and I feel the shift in me it's monumental and all I can say is I got to continue practicing this I got to continue noticing the gap I got to continue embodying who I want to be and that sometimes means just saying, give me a minute, give me 10 minutes, I don't care how long it takes, I've got to become this now. I cannot just push myself through another instance of feeling that fear and doing it anyway. I've got to find the coherence and the state of being that I want to embody. And when you finally do that, when you finally embody abundance or healing in the face of your sickness or wholeness in the face of your lack or your loss or your that person's not there or whatever it is, that is massive. You just created something new. I gave my body a really strong do it, and I know I'm out of time. There's a, a, a beautiful process that Joe Dispenza gifted to the student body. Um, and it's powerful and it really helped me recognize a degree of holding on and fear that I hadn't and just soften out of it, let it go. So that's that's another big chunk of it. Maybe I'll, I'll boobble about that tomorrow, but for now, we're out of time. Thank you so much for joining me. This is story time. This is This is real. This is what's just happening for me. And I'm so grateful to share it with you. Thank you so much. You're part of my abundance. Love you. Bye for now. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.